All right, guys, it's Nick Gloff with Raw Nutrition. I'm here on another leg day with my man, the man of the mustache, Alex. So this is kind of a special leg day. This is the last leg day of his prep. He's gonna be on stage next weekend. So as we go through the session, you're gonna notice that I make a lot of notes about what I'm doing differently than what he's doing. Major thing that you're going to take note of is that he's pretty much just walking through this and going through the motions. He's stopping way, 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 way short of failure. And the amount of load that he's moving is like a half of what it normally would be. The reason why we're doing it with him is because he's gone through this prep with a lot, a lot of weight that he pulled off. He went really, really, really hard to do it. So it took a lot out of him to get to this point. And up until now, he's moved really, really smoothly, luckily enough. And then at the very end, fatigue just absolutely smashed him right in the face. We're making sure that our major focus now is dropping as much fatigue out of him as possible so that he can spend a little bit more time just de-stressing and even taking specific times a day away from his little puppy that he takes care of now that he got in the middle of prep. So that can lower his stress levels. We're pulling out everything. So his day today is following in my shadow, doing everything that he can do for less sets, way further from failure with a lot less load than he's used to just so that he can move blood around, get the patterns done, and make sure that he has a final touch up before stage day. But for me, this is a normal day. This is a normal hamstring dominated leg day. So as of this point, we're recording this intro for the second time, but we're all the way to stiff legs in the middle of the session, which is our major movement for the day. He's gonna be pretty much tapering it off to the finish after this. And then I'm going to continue with a, uh, a drop set, strip set deal with leg press, and then we'll see if I have anything left in me after that uh, to determine what the rest of the day looks like. But that's about it. I think we cover any other details after it's all said and done. You can stay seated, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll see you then. All the way under. Come on. Come on. Yep. Good. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good. Got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. What was that? You really squat down there, huh? Yeah. I need full range of motion. Okay. Oh, first point of business to start talking about. As you can see, my trusty partner here had to yell at him a little bit to get me all the way down into the bottom. It's one of the things that on almost every ham curl and specifically on seated that I notice the most it's really easy for you to stop at like a 90 degree knee. Yeah. It just feels like a natural spot to go to. And a lot of machines unfortunately do end there. But when you have the opportunity to, with our trusty old prime here, and a partner that can help you to actually get there once you start to fail, it really changes the game to, be actu uh, to actually be able to get there. Because it's not often you do. And the best part about it is that once you're already failing and you can't get there on your own accord, you're gonna be pretty weak in the short range on your own. Obviously you couldn't get there on your own. The whole point of us getting all the way there is to then be able to spend extra time going through the length and range. Oh, cardio catching up to me now. Rather, once we get all the way shortened with help, we can actually go through more of a lengthening phase than we would have without it. So you're gonna get more out of every rep doing it that way than if you hadn't. Oh, I forgot how much talking takes out of me. 
Okay. So you guys missed the very end of that set, first set for Alex, but regardless, not all that eventful. The point, the point of that is actually because he's stopping way before you normally would. So any set that you see him do today, don't take that as, oh, okay, that's where I should actually stop doing my reps in my own training. He's taking it to like a five reps in reserve right now. So he's got some higher stress levels from having pushed so hard for so long this prep that we have to pull out all the stops now. Me and his main coach that does the rest of his nutrition and supplementation, I just handle his training. Matt Berzicott handles everything else. We're having to pull out all the stops to try and get the stress to lower far enough that his body clears up and he starts to carry a little bit more fullness and start showing up the way that he's worked so hard to be. So he put in all the work on the front end, so now he has to actually chill so his body responds the way that we want it to for his peaking. So any sets you see him do today, do not try to replicate in where you're stopping the set. It's not gonna be helpful for you. You're gonna be way undershooting it. If you make that a habit, it's not gonna be an easy one to break and it won't be fun when somebody gives you the rude awakening you need for you to work hard enough to grow. I'm gonna do a repeat of the last one because I'm gonna do three sets here. I don't know where it's gonna end up, but I wanna get 10 at the very minimum, and then if I can get more than that, I'll take more. Normal rules. Yeah, come on. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh. 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 Gim. Yeah. Gim. Oh. Gim. Oh. Come on. Come on. Two. Oh. Finish. Gim. Ah. One. Okay. Oh. All right. Mm. Oh. Okay. Mm. Your turn. I'm not gonna start talking yet. <laughs> I've learned from my mistake. That's the one. Yeah, we're training about the same effort. Yep. Exactly the same. Exactly. This could be a teaching moment. So, you may notice on the sets that we've already done, both of us sit back and push this way into this rather than doing this thing that people do. Now, aside from the usual issue with that, talking about the increased sensation is due to the sciatic nerve actually being the thing that's taking a further stretch so you feel that more, which is why you feel more when you're up here. Knock that whole point out and don't even consider it because this is the only thing that really matters in my opinion, to be honest with you, is that if you're gonna be doing this anyways, lifting things that is, you kind of have to understand physics. So seeing that this arm that moves, that's loaded, is trying to pull you up this way. When you get, go real light to make this easy. When you get this arm all the way down here, this is trying to move you this way, okay? So your body is going to get pulled in the direction that this is trying to move into. So for you to actually get anything out of this, if you're here, hunched over yourself, 
This is actually trying to pull you this way and around. Okay? So if you're doing this, it already wants to push you back here. You have to fight your way forward to stay in this position. You're not typically ever going to get your leg fully straight here anyway. Part of the purpose of doing a seated hamstring curl is to get into the length and range of the hamstring to begin with. So you have more sensation by sitting up here because you're more flexed at the hip, but you don't actually ever get your knees fully straight. So how does that really help your hands? It doesn't. Plus, if you're going here, this is trying to turn your whole body back. It's trying to pull you up and out of the seat. And if it's trying to pull you up and out of the seat, then the way that you actually create effective tension here and lock yourself in place so that you can exert the most amount of force through your hamstrings is by opposing the direction that the load is trying to move you into. This is trying to get you out of the seat. So if you don't push yourself into the seat, you're only helping the load pull you the direction that it's trying to get you to go. So this not only is going to make you less stable, because it's making you less stable, it's going to make you a lot weaker. And whatever benefit you might be getting from getting into this, into this pulled forward position, it doesn't outdo the benefit of being able to move another two thirds of the stack. The amount of load difference is so massive that whatever you think you're getting from this is already knocked out by you just going here. So it's definitely not a minute. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Yep. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. Come on. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. That's it for that. Yeah, doctor. Yep. Pro tip, anytime you get on the adductor, make sure the pin is in. <laughs> Trust me, it may seem like it's not that important, until you crush your fingers trying to do one of these. Pro tip will serve you well, I promise. I mean, every other tip doesn't matter if all of your fingers are gone. <laughs> so, hmm. You must be fun at parties. I've never been fun at parties. <laughs> That's a distinct part of my personality that I am not any fun at parties. All right. You want to get another warm up before going, or you're going? I'm going. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Go on ahead. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Come on, come on! One! Oh! Get him! Oh! Oh! Ha. Yeah, good. I got you. Thank you. Oh! That made for a better example on that one. I didn't have control over that finish. He had to help me. There we go. The moment of truth. Don't hurt. Nice. Oh. Ooh. Okay. From here, I need to do one more. He's going to be done. He's already done his two sets. I don't need him to do any more than that. His adductors are already very, very good. He's not gaining any more tissue in a week. So, done putting him through paces for this. He'll be moving on to the stiff legs with me after this. I've decided he's going to do them, but he's going to pretty much do the warm up sets along with me do one partially difficult set and be done. I would rather him experience the length and range, get some loading in, lock in and focus for a set and then be done. Where up to now, 
even into the last leg day that we did this, he did two sets. And they were both very good top sets. As of the last time, he did two really good top sets. He's not going to be able to do that now. And with stiff legs or any hinge specifically at this point in a prep, it's the most fatigue inducing movement that you're going to do. So if there's already an issue for you, watchers, if you're at any position right now, you're nearing the end of a prep, you're dieting, you're as close as Alex is out even, you have one last leg session, hinges are not the thing that you want to just keep on hammering if you have a choice on anything. You wanna pull back there so that your overall systemic recovery can be good enough, that your overall response to the changes that are being made to your diet, the rest of your activity, and the rest of it is going to go well. Right now, if we were to push him too hard on this, it's gonna go badly. It could either result in injury because of his physical state at the moment, or it'll put a bigger block in the way of him actually filling up and feeling proper, and then resting and recovering the way he should be since his his internal state, and most people at this point is not really receptive to it anyways. Doing it now is not gonna be a good idea. Let's grab a power bar. There. Burping up that C-Bum Essential Charged. Feeling it. The watermelon's just as good the second time. Put on the straps now. Yes, sir. Let's go, buddy. Yeah, I'll take it. Put some respect on that shirt. That's right. Back in my glory days, before I retired, just a washed up keyboard warrior now. Back when seven plate front squats were 
a part of my weekly routine. Now just the thought of it rips me in half. You might notice as I'm doing these, I typically don't actually touch the ground on every rep. I would actually recommend most of the time that you do, especially if you're doing this from a deficit, because it really is kind of part of the point that you're getting that full range of motion. The reason I don't on these is specifically because these platforms are a little bit warped. So even if we're set up as perfectly as we can be on this, and as much as I try to, one side will always touch the ground just slightly before the other one. So to get around that, I try to dangle it just just barely above the floor so that I can avoid having that because every time that it touches and you're not prepared for it, it just knocks the bar out of your hand a little bit and turns it. It just makes it so much harder and it doesn't need to be. So I just take the other difficult route instead of having technical errors mess me up and make it harder. I'll take the other way and just pause it right where I have to have control over it and I don't have any sort of rest by putting it to the ground. So you can choose your hard on these, I guess, but I'd say for those that are less experienced that don't necessarily have the ability to make that decision easily or haven't thought about it yet, if you're always tapping one side of the ground first on every one of these hinges that you do, whether you're on a deficit or not, Take it. Whew. Call it at two. I'm not gonna do a third there. Oh, it just feels good on my lower back. Take this regardless of how it feels. So it felt really easy in the bottom, which I would hope for. 
kind of part of the reason why I use the bands in the first place is so I can make it a little easier in the very bottom in the stretch so I don't get overwhelmed by the loading there. I tend to get some headaches when I do movements like this where the bias is to reach my neck back and press my head back into a pad like a hack squat, a pendulum, a leg press. And especially it gets bad when there's much more loading on me, felt loading at least in the very bottom position where I'm trying to create as much tightness as possible. overall while I take a little bit of a load off in the very bottom so I don't ever have the impetus, the bias, the desire to short change the very bottom position in the stretch so I always end up getting there. I'm not scared of going there and the, the overall blood pressure I experience and the tension of trying to peel my head back isn't nearly as extreme. So ends up being more productive for me overall, or at least I feel, and I can scale this and in my experience too, whether it's this leg press or another one, I've always noted that whether I have it banded down like this to make it harder in the latter portion or not, I end up failing with pretty much the same loading at pretty much the same rep regardless. So it just makes more sense for me to have more total challenge throughout the entirety of the movement rather than still failing at the same spot with the same load, the same reps with less total overall resistance. So, been waiting for you. Perfect. I had to start rambling to the camera for a little bit. Perfect. Yeah, it worked out. Okay, I'm gonna need you to make sure that I don't die. Ben! Four, two. Come on. Okay. All right. Made you work? I made you work? Okay, all right. That's how I know I didn't bitch out. I made him work to lift it up. Something like that. Oh, pull two.
one more there. Okay. I had to make sure that was the last rep. Or else there was still more. Motherfucker. Still a bitch. Hangover. If you just keep going, it doesn't suck. So once you decide it's over, then it starts to suck. Yeah. But what do I know? I've never drank before. Uh, strictly Kratom. And espresso. Mm. All right. So, I just got finished with that leg press set. I don't know how long it was, but it wasn't long enough. Next, next time it'll have to be a little bit better, but. Every time I've done that, it's gotten a little bit better. So my endurance in the set has improved, but I've just only started getting used to using this leg press specifically. I've never really used this one. This is my first run at it. So I'm getting used to how it feels and especially how I can handle it when it gets really heavy, which every time I've done it, it's felt a little bit easier to do. So as I keep going and I have this strip set in there as part of the regular programming on this day, I'm gonna keep on working on trying to maintain higher loading through more total strip sets rather than dropping it as low because what I find happens is that I get really fatigued and it feels like the heaviest thing in the world but then as soon as I stop pulling the strip sets and I try to do a repeat set and I have a little bit longer of a rest period, it feels like it's renewed again, which if I can do it a little bit heavier from the start, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm just gonna end up hitting a brick wall that just won't budge at some point. And the higher the loading I go with towards the end, I think the more definite that line is gonna be. So that's gonna be the long-term goal on this. I'm pretty spent. Uh, Alex just did a single set on the prime leg press rather than this. So he hasn't put this Arsenal leg press into the rotation. So we've just kept him on the old faithful that he's been using for a good long time now not changing that up until after prep is over. So, and even then he does really like using the prime. So he may not even have to do that until he's past the loading potential that he can use on this. But now I'm gonna move on and get some hamstring curls in. I don't believe my quads have anything more in them for leg extensions, so I'm not gonna try that just yet. I don't plan on that actually working. Alex is gonna do some hamstring curls and possibly single leg leg extension if he can do it. Then we'll move on and be done. If I do any more, I most certainly will puke. Huh? Yeah. All right, you guys. So that concludes this leg day for Alex and myself. So of everything that we covered today, hopefully you've gotten a couple of things out of it. First thing, if you wanna actually grow and you're in a position to do so, take your sets a little bit closer to where I took them to today rather than where Alex took them to. Remember that if you're deep in prep, you better be listening to your coach on what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And if you're getting told that you need to pull back, model yourself a little bit more closely to what Alex is doing. Follow the instructions that you're being given know that if you're really at the tail end and you've done your job that it's better that you don't push it way too far over the edge because it's a lot harder to pull back from it than you might think in the moment it might feel better for you mentally if you're a very highly driven individual to just keep on digging and thinking that the soldier mentality that got you to that point will take you to the finish line if you're being told not to don't it's not going to put another badge on your lapel just by going a little bit extra, the extra distance when you're told that you shouldn't. 
I think that's probably the, the wisest thing that I could tell you right now while my brain is trying to crawl out of every orifice on my head. So I think that concludes it. So this is uh, Nick Gloff and uh, Mr. Mustache out. <laughs>